Hello, NSE family. Hope you're enjoying your your week. So, a couple of announcements to uh, to start for you. Just a reminder that Pastor Al is on vacation for another week and uh, taking a little bit of uh, well-deserved R and R. To remind you, we're going to be meeting as a church at Camp Cedarwood, and uh, that is on the 30th of of August. Uh, we we have limited spots left for that so if you would like to come uh, please do sign up using the email that uh, Joey has sent out uh, to all of us and if you didn't get the email then please contact us at the office and we'll make sure that your name is on the list but it's first come first serve. Uh, there's a day camp reunion for, for campers more info about that in the midweek so just just luck for uh, uh, the information about that and youth is restarting on September the 15th so just to, to Keep your your uh, just to to keep that on your horizon as well. Or we have a meme challenge. And there is a meme challenge. <laughs> <Get cut. laughs> so on Sunday we were uh, considering the reality of King David's sinfulness and guilt before our holy God when he coveted another man's wife, committed adultery with her, and then had him murdered. Clearly a dark time. Uh, for David and a dark time for Israel as he fell into sin. But you know, I'm sure David's fall didn't just come out of the blue. Before David's acts of commission, the evil he actually did, I think there would have been hidden acts of omission, things he didn't do that he should have actually been doing. We know he wasn't at war with his troops, where as king he perhaps should have been battling uh with with his with his men and i'm pretty sure he wasn't enjoying the communion with god that he once had as well complacency i think in it crept into to king david's life and i'm sure that his spiritual temperature had cooled somewhat at this time i really don't think for example david would have been singing or praying psalm 37 that morning that that before he actually fell into sin. Let me read some of those verses to you. Verses 3 and 4 of Psalm 37. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Or verses 12 to 13. The wicked person schemes against the righteous. Just think about how David schemed against Uriah. And he gnashes his teeth at him. The Lord laughs at him because he sees that that day is coming. I find it really hard to believe David would have been singing that psalm that morning and then committed, went out and committed what he, he did. David had wandered from the Lord. And I expect that there was that complacency at that, that time. Not seeking God as he used to seek God. His heart was not right. And surely that's why he actually says, Lord, I need you to create in me a clean heart and give me a, a, a sustain me with a, a willing spirit within me. He needed God to come and give him that. And we too face the danger, friends, of hearts becoming hardened and cold towards our great God. Hearts that wander, as the old hymn says, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. None of us are immune from the deceptive power of idolatry and sin. And the moment we think we are, we're actually in a very dangerous position. So what has God given to us to actually help protect our hearts from becoming hard, from going cold, from spiritually wandering from God? Well, one of the means of grace is the church, the gathering together with God's people. This is what the writer of Hebrews says in chapter three of his letter. Watch out, brothers and sisters, so that there won't be in any of you an unbelieving uh, heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage each other daily while it's still called today so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. So it turns out that the church is actually one of the means that God has given us to prevent our hearts from becoming hardened by sin's deception. It is our meeting together, gathering around God's word, encouraging one another, celebrating the Lord's Supper together, 
being under church leadership as well. Um, friends, those are gifts. That's a gift of God's grace to us to protect our hearts. Friends, we understand that it's important to be careful in our meeting together during a pandemic. And there are risks in gathering at this time. It's possible or even perhaps likely that at some point we will have folks amongst us who will contract um, or, or contract COVID-19. That is why we're, we're following uh, government guidelines carefully and trying to do things responsibly. Um, but, and this is a huge but, don't forget that actually we are all dying. And there is another danger that is perhaps even more dangerous than this virus. Watching online is no replacement for actually meeting together uh, with, with the church and connecting with other believers, hearing the word of God and encouraging one another in our faith. In God's economy, the church for believers is not optional. It's absolutely vital for our spiritual well-being. So, NSC, we are really glad that so many of you have been following along online and watching our services, and we're committed to continuing with that ministry. But I want to gently challenge you and encourage you this morning. Is this the time, if you've not been attending church at all, to think about meeting with your church family a little bit more consistently? There are people who need your encouragement and who need the gifts that you bring to the church. And believe it or not, you need the encouragement of other believers as well. You need to, to, to be with God's people, the church. Of course, it can be a little bit easier doing church virtually. Uh, you don't have to meet with other people. And that means you don't have to meet with sinners and all the messiness and kind of difficulties that other sinners have, but we've just considered the reality that we are actually all sinners. And actually God uses other sinners to help make us become more like his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so let me, um, let me just encourage you that, uh, you know, in keeping with government guidelines, we're being careful to social distance when we meet. We're we're allowed to have up to 80 in our main church hall here. We're also uh, allowed to have up to 20 or 30 upstairs on the third floor if, if we need to. Um, we don't encourage hanging around in here after church services. We move outside straight away where it's, it, it's, more, um, it, it's more safe for us to actually meet. That might become a little bit more challenging as we go on later into our year, but we can enjoy that at the moment. Um, we would love to see you. We really would. And if you're concerned about actually, and we know some of you have legitimate health concerns and aren't able to come, we're delighted to be able to offer the online services. We're committed to carrying on with that as well for people who just can't get out or for whom the risk is just too high at the moment. Um, but if you are in that situation and you would like maybe one or two of us to actually come and meet with you and connect with you, um, in your home, uh, someone from our family here, we are very happy uh, to, to look at that. Please just let us know and we'll seek to make that, uh, that happen. So um, let me just uh, encourage you with a couple of other words from uh, the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 10 uh, to conclude this, this morning's midweek uh, wake, wake up. And let us watch out for one another to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some of us are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. So friends, stay safe and stay strong in the Lord.